Before we get started with connected and smart things, there are a few one-time setup steps. Specifically, we have to import the connected smart app and device handler code into your smart things instance. One of the great things about smart things and the reason why I think it's the best commercial home automation platform is that they've opened their platform to developers like me so that there's a strong community of third party uh, smart apps and device handlers that really enhance the smart things ecosystem. Now, thanks to all of you and the success of Connected in the past few months, I'm now working with the Smart Things team to get the Connected Smart App and Device Handlers certified so that they'll be preloaded into the Smart Things app. But we're not quite there yet, and it's a slow process. So, in the meantime, there are a few setup steps that you need to do to get the Connected app into your Smart Things instance. I know this might sound confusing, but it's really not that hard, and I'm going to walk you through it. Now there are two ways to do this, via GitHub and also the manual way, copy and paste. GitHub is by far the fastest and the easiest, but there may be a few cases where you can't use or you don't want to use GitHub. GitHub is a platform for developers to share their code with the world. Uh, and the connected smart app and device handlers are all hosted on GitHub for anybody to use. So we're going to go through that process first. If you don't already have a GitHub account, you can sign up for free at github.com. For this step, it's best to use a computer. We're going to log in to the SmartThings IDE and link our GitHub account to SmartThings. Let me show you how. Using your computer, open your web browser and go to graph.api.smartthings.com and then click on Login. Put in your email address and depending on when you signed up, you may have a SmartThings account or a Samsung account. I understand that Samsung is in the process of consolidating these, so this might change in the future. Now you're logged into the SmartThings IDE and click on My Locations, then click on Your Location. Most people will only have one. This will bring you to the SmartThings server shard for your location, so verify that in the address bar. Your address might be different. Now click on My Smart Apps and then the Enable GitHub Integration button. Click Next and then it's going to bring you to a GitHub page that's going to ask you to authorize the SmartThings community. Click the green button and that will, if you're not logged into GitHub, ask you to log in. Now you've authorized GitHub. Click on the settings button and now you can add the connected repository to your SmartThings integration. The owner name is connected-io and the repository name is connected-security and change the branch name to stable, S-T-A-B-L-E and then hit save. Now we've completed the one-time setup step to link GitHub to SmartThings. To import the Smart App, click on the Update from Repo button, then choose Connected to Security. You'll see two Smart Apps in the New columns. Check both of those and then click Execute Update. And you'll see that both connected apps are loaded. Now click on the Edit icon next to Connected Service Manager. And now we have to scroll down and enable OAuth. So click on OAuth, then click on Enable the OAuth in the Smart App. You don't have to fill out anything else, just hit the blue Update button. Now OAuth is enabled for this app. OAuth allows the connected Smart App to authenticate with your SmartThings instance. Now go back to My Smart Apps, and we have to publish the connected parentheses Connect Smart App. So click on it, then click on the Publish button, and then click on For Me and that will publish it into your SmartThings instance, just for you. Now go back to my Smart Apps and verify that the Connected Connect Smart App is showing published and the Connected Service Manager app says OAuth true. Once you've done that, we've finished with the Smart Apps. Now let's go over to my device handlers. Do the same thing. Click Update from Repo, then choose Connected Security. Now there are a handful of device handlers here. You don't have to install all of them but it doesn't hurt to do so. So just check all of the connected device handlers and then as a shortcut check the publish button and then execute update and that will import all of the connected device handlers in one go and publish them at the same time. See that wasn't so bad. Okay so now that we've imported the connected smart app and device handlers into our SmartThings instance now we can switch over to our mobile app and set everything up. 
For those of you who can't use GitHub or don't want to sign up for GitHub, there is a manual import process. Uh, skip to the end of this video and I'll show you how to do that. Open the SmartThings app, then tap on Automation, then tap on Smart Apps. Now to tap on Add a Smart App, scroll all the way down to My Apps, and choose Connected, Connect. Now we'll select Add a Connected Device. And this is how we'll discover the connected device on the LAN. Tap here to start discovery. And this process takes a few seconds up to a minute. Great, it found the device. Now tap to continue. It's gonna ask me what type of hardware I have, the connected alarm panel or the Node MCU base, the open source hardware. In this case, I have the connected alarm panel, so I'll tap here. Now first thing, I can rename this device. I'm gonna call this alarm panel. If you have multiple devices, this makes it easier to tell them apart. Now we can go ahead and configure each zone. So my first, my zone one is my front door, so I'm gonna set it as an open close sensor, and then I can name it front door. And scroll down and repeat for the rest of the zones. My zone two is my living room door, Zone three is my door to the garage. So that's also an open closed sensor. Now zone five I've set up as my, I've connected my PZO buzzer to set up as the beep beep. So I'm gonna set that as a beep blink switch. And I like to call it beep beep. And zone six is my second set of windows. Now you'll notice zone six does not support an output. So you cannot select a beep blink switch or a switch for zone six. It's an input only. But that's okay for a window. To set up my siren on the dedicated alarm output, I just set that as siren. And I'll also just name it siren. And once we're done assigning all of our zones, tap save. Now the connected device needs to be on and connected to Wi-Fi during this process because it will sync the settings to the device. There we go. Now in just a second, you'll see alarm panel show up here in my connected devices. After you've completed the setup process, when you go back to my home, you'll see all the doors and windows that I've configured will show up in my home view. And now you can go around the house open and close your doors, and make sure each one of them update their status. Now the last step is to set up Smart Home Monitor. Now of course this is optional, but if you want to use connected and smart things as a security system, Smart Home Monitor is the best choice. So we tap Smart Home Monitor, tap the gear icon to start settings, tap security, now most people, when in armed away mode, will use every open and close sensor and every motion sensor in your house. If you want to selectively choose which sensors to use for your security, you can unselect this, and now you can individually select which open close sensors and motion sensors you want to use. In my case, I'm going to use all of them, select the default, and now in armed home mode, you can do the same. You can by default, it will use every open close sensor, but not the motion sensors. Tap next. Now, if you want your siren to sound when an intrusion is detected, tap alert with sirens. And now tap select sirens. And the siren that I set up and connected should show up here. So I select the siren, tap done, and tap save. And tap save again. Now I'm back at the Smart Home Monitor home screen, and now I can arm and disarm my home using these buttons here, and it also shows up on my SmartThings dashboard. Now to automate arming and disarming of your alarm system based on your presence is actually very easy. 
If you've set up your phone as a present sensor and all the adults in your household also have smartphones that are set up as present sensors, you can use your presence to arm and disarm the alarm system automatically. Tap automation, then tap routines. Now you're going to want to arm the alarm system when everybody leaves. So let's edit the goodbye routine and we select it to set smart home monitor to armed away and automatically perform goodbye when everybody leaves. And it's going to ask you to select the members of your household and there are some options you can select here. Action delay uh, is default to 10 minutes. I recommend you usually lower it down to two minutes so that the alarm system will arm two minutes after you've left the geofence of your home. And tap save. And then tap save again. Now you want the system to automatically disarm when you arrive back home. So let's do a similar thing for the I'm back routine. Set smart home monitor to disarm and automatically perform I'm back when someone arrives. Tap save and save again. To set up the door chime, first go to automation, then we use the smart lighting application. Add a new lighting application and when you choose which lights do you want to control, it actually works for any type of, of switch, so it doesn't have to be lights. We're going to select the beep beep, and then we want it to turn on, and the trigger is when one of our doors is open. So we can select our doors, and when any of those doors open, it will trigger the beep to turn on, which will make the beep noise. And hit save. Now you can customize the number or the duration of the beeps by tapping the configure icon. And by default, it does three beeps. I'm gonna change it to two. And you can make the beep tone shorter or longer or pause for longer amounts in between the, each beep by setting these settings here. If you're outside of the United States or if for whatever reason you don't want to sign up for a GitHub account, you still can use the connected smart app and device handlers. You just have to copy and paste the code manually into your SmartThings IDE. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The manual import process is a few more steps and it involves some copy and paste. First, open your web browser to github.com slash connected io slash connected security. That's the repository. Click on the branch and then choose Stable Branch. This is where all of the code for Connected lives. Now first, for the Smart Apps, let's click on the Smart App folder and then click on the source code for Connected-Connect. And then click the Raw button to give you a nice view to copy and paste. Highlight everything by selecting All or hit Command-A or Control-A and then Copy. Now click, go back to the SmartThings IDE, click Add a new Smart App and then click From Code and paste that code into the, the big code box there and click Create. That's all there is to it. Now you just have to publish the Smart App. So click on the Publish button and then For Me. And now the Connected Connect Smart App is published. Let's do the same thing for the Connected Service Manager app. So go back to My Smart Apps, then flip over to GitHub and find click on the source code for the connected service manager.src file and then the groovy file. Again click raw, highlight everything, control A, control C to copy, and go back to my smart apps. Click new smart app from code and then paste everything in that big code block and then click create. Now this one we don't have to publish but we do have to go and enable OAuth. So now click on app settings Scroll down to the OAuth section, 
click OAuth, and then click Enable OAuth in Smart App. You don't have to update anything here, just click the blue Update button, and then OAuth is enabled. Now verify by going to My Smart Apps, and you should see the Connected Connect app is published, and the Connected Service Manager app has OAuth set to true. Next, we have to do the same thing for the device handlers. So click on My Device Handlers, then go back to GitHub, and navigate back to the root of the repository, click on the Device Types folder, and all the device handler source code are in there. You don't have to install every device handler, just the devices that you're going to use. For example, contact sensors, motion sensors. So go into each one, again click the raw button and then select all and copy, then click the, go back to smart things, click the green button to create a new device handler from code and then paste it in there and click create. And each device handler has to be published, so after you create it, click the publish button and then for me. Now repeat this process for the other device handlers that you want to install. Again, go back to GitHub, click on the source code for the device handler that you need, click the raw button for a nice copy and paste view, select everything, copy with Control C or Command C, and then paste in the from code box. Click create and then publish. Now you can verify that your device handlers are installed and published.